Okay, so this is an example of, uh, of what we all encounter every time we go to the operating room and we're working in the subacromial space. You can see I'm looking from the posterior portal and I'm looking down on the tendon. I've taken the liberty of uh, cleaning out much of the subacromial bursa that uh, might be in the area here. You can see, for those of you just to get oriented, you can see the top here would be the acromion. You can see the uh, CA ligament going off into the distance, marking the very front of our space and uh, of course the deltoid fascia that we've come through here. Now, if I turn my eyes down, you can see the, uh, the entire distance of the cuff. You can see all the way up front here, if I wanted to get into the subdeltoid space, we would open that up for biceps tenodesis, et cetera. You can see the lateral gutter here, which we want to have exposed out so that we have plenty of room uh, when we're doing uh, things like cuff repair, et cetera. But where we're going to call our attention to in this particular case are patients that we see quite oftenly who have either partial thickness or delaminated cuff pathology. So you can see looking from here, the rotator cuff doesn't look too bad except in this one area. And if you take a look at this little flap tear that you see, sometimes you don't even see the flap. Sometimes what you're looking at is this sort of delaminated, just degenerative tendinosis tissue. So what would you do with that? Well, in general, most of us would, uh, would place a shaver like this in, and we would do some kind of cleanup of the area. If this flap were bigger, I'd consider doing an, a, um, a bursal-sided tear, not hard at all to take a stitch through here, through here, and then just run it down into an anchor in here for a bursal-sided cuff repair. But the problem is, is that biologically, we're limited here because this tendon is not high quality. It's, it's tendinopathic. There's a reason it tore in the first place, and it's usually not trauma. So the Amnion Express will allow us to deliver a streamer directly into this area to put the growth factors that are present in the streamer directly in line and exactly where you want uh, growth factors to be. So we're going to demonstrate that. Once we've come up with the idea, it's very important that we uh, use a spinal needle to localize where we want to come in from. We'd like this to be a straight shot. So in this particular case, I'm coming in just a little bit lower uh, down, and you can see that it, uh, from a little bit lower down, I can get right into the spot that I want to deliver this uh, streamer directly into the uh, partial thickness tear. So I'm pleased with that and I'll make a small uh, incision on the shoulder uh, with a portal. And uh, so now that we've done that, now we're ready for insertion. The insertion process is, is incredibly easy and familiar to, uh, to surgeons because we do this every day. You have a, what essentially amounts to a large spinal needle in the area. And you can see if I give you a, a, a tour, a little pier directly down, remember where we set the device, we set the device such that it would sit just proximal to the slot. You can see the amnion streamer, which has already been loaded. You can see it down there in the depths. And that's because our thumb slide is advanced to the second portion uh, right where it's supposed to be. You can also see on this that I can bring this guy in and we can demonstrate really well the entire length of the amnion inserter. And it allows me to show you or determine how far I want this depth to go. In this particular case, the pathology exists all the way back here to the musculotendinous junction. You can see this patient's muscle is not in the best of shape. And so uh, we have a solution for that as well. But in this particular case, what we're going to do is we're going to take the uh, amnion streamer and we're going to insert it right from the side and then deploy it. Okay, so here we go. Pretty simple. You just take it. You decide the direction and the depth that you want to put it. I think I like that position. I'm going to now deliver this by inserting the, uh, the amnion express device into where I want it to be. It's now right within the tendon itself and that tendinopathic tissue. Once I'm in this position, I simply slide up. I can see that last laser defined marker. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert the device all the way up to the second and now all the way hubbed into the tissue. Once I've done that, I simply slide my insert inserter back. I keep my thumb, for me, on the uh, amnion fork tipped inserter so that the amnion is stayed. And then once I get back to this particular position, then I just simply withdraw the tip inserter. It's a beautiful view of the inserter right there. That's what captures the amnion. It's also what kind of forces the delivery. And then without any difficulty at all, I simply slide that in the sheath and remove it. And that's it. That's all it takes to insert that set of growth factors into the area of concern. 
now you can say, well, maybe I'm concerned enough about this flap tear that I would want to actually stick a stitch in this and repair it. Well, no problem. Your amnion is within the tear. It's beautiful and stable. And you could simply insert a scorpion device and grab here, maybe a simple stitch, or maybe if it's larger, you can just do a simple uh, mattress stitch on this bursal-sided tear. You simply take the mattress uh, portion, dunk it into a hole here, and now you have an augmented biologic solution to rotator cuff debridement, rotator cuff tendinopathy, or in bigger cases, rotator cuff uh, repair. The nice thing about it is, is that there is no effect on rehab. However you would normally at, uh, uh, rehab your rotator cuff, you can be 100% uh, ass assured because the tissue is inserted. It's not laid on. So some of the products and devices out there actually lay something on top of the cuff. And while uh, um, that is a, a reasonable choice for certain pathologies, one of the beauties of the Amnion Express is that this pathology is inserted within the damaged tendon, so it's protected by it. I think that if, especially if you have articular sided tears or interstitial tears, it's a little bit of a jump to understand or accept that something placed on top of the cuff gets gets and treats the pathology that we know lives intratendinously and, and especially on the other side of the tendon. So rehab's not affected. Rehab him exactly as you would for this particular patient. Uh, we would rehab this one just as we would any normal subacromial decompression and debridement. It doesn't change any of that postoperative uh, course at all.